Welcome to Wild United Methodist Church. I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad you chose to spend your Sunday morning with us. Um, you know, uh, we just sang, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Is he welcome here? Amen. Is he welcome here? Amen. 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 If you are visiting with us this morning, we especially want to know that we're glad that you're here. Hope you found, find the love of Christ in this place and uh, the love of, of his people. There is a blue card in the seat pocket in front of you. We invite you to check that out and to fill that out. You know, um, as our church gets larger, I've told you this before, that it, it gets, it's frustrating to me because I want to know every one of you. I want to know you. I want to know uh, you to know me. And it, that gets harder to do as we get larger. Uh, but uh, that's still our goal, and if, if you want to visit us and, and fly under the radar, that's okay. We allow that, but uh, we would love for, uh, to know who you are and have a relationship with you, and that, this blue card helps us to do that. You can fill that out. There's a place if you'd like to be added to our email list. We can do a lot of communicating that way. You can put your email down there and, and check the box. If, if, if the email's there and you don't check the box to be added to our, our deal, we, we won't add you to our mailing list. Uh, so just know if you, wanna, if you want, put your email there and check that box. Um, and you can leave those blue cards in the seat pocket or the seat where you're sitting when you leave today, and we'll pick those up. Um, I didn't tell... Um, I didn't tell everything on Gemini. Yeah, yeah. Y'all can go ahead and crawl under the seat right now if you'd like. I got to tell you this quick story. Th these girls, had, about a year ago, I guess it was, maybe not quite a year ago, but a while back. Oh, come on. Anyway, uh, I, oh, when well, we have communion, let me just tell you, I'm one, of my, one of my secrets. I always have my wife and one of my daughters. They, they're my plants. If we, if we, have uh, the servers, I have people that, that uh, servants that get our servers for us, and so I don't, I don't do that, and so when I announce for the servers to come forward, you know, I'm in my head, I'm going one, two, three, four, and I'm, and I'm making sure we have enough, and I've, I've told my wife and daughters, if we don't have enough, I'm going to point to you, and I'm going to ask you all to come and, and plug in there, it's kind of my secret weapon. Well, but this particular Sunday, my wife, one of them was in the praise team, and the other two, my wife and the other daughter, were serving. And so I get up, and, there's, and we're short. We're short. And so I'm quickly, you know, trying to act like I'm cool, like I got my act together. And I'm scanning the, the, the congregation, and I see these two college girls. College kids will do anything. Did you know that? You ask them, like, hey, would you tar the roof of the church? Like, yeah, yeah, for... You buy me a burrito, and I'll just tar the roof, if you, you know, whatever. So I, so I see these two college girls sitting there, and so I looked at them, and I went, what? you know, and I kind of gave them that, would you come help me kind of thing. If you look up in the dictionary, panic, you know, sheer terror, that's what I saw in their eyes, just this just sheer terror. So I moved on, and then I gave them grief later. It's like, well, you left me out hanging, man. What's up with that? Gemini, man, but they have since come to their senses and, and uh, have served communion with me. Okay, enough about that. Galatians 5, Galatians 5. By the way, while, we're, while you're turning there, did you know it's okay to laugh in church? It's not, it's not in the, I promise, it's not in the Bible, thou shalt not laugh in church. It's not there. It's okay to, to have fun in church. It's okay for us to relax and and enjoy one another's fellowship. Galatians 5. Galatians 5. Beginning in verse 16. So I say, this is the Apostle Paul, so I say, live by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other, so that you do not, know, not do what you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Verse 19, the acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Now, li now just listen to this list. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, debauchery uh, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, 
drunkenness, orgies, and the like. He, he wasn't, basically Paul wasn't saying, this isn't an all-inclusive list. This is just, I'm just hitting some high points here. There's a lot more to the sinful nature. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Uh-oh, we just got serious. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Let's pray. Come, Holy Spirit. We've invited you. Your word says we're two or three are gathered together. You are there. We ask you to speak, not me, but you, Holy Spirit. Speak in power and authority. Change our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, we are continuing the sermon series, second week two of the sermon series, Church on Fire. Church on Fire. Now, that's if, if this church, if physical church had been on fire, you, I wouldn't be preaching on it. I mean, you would have probably seen it on the news or something. So we're not talking about a physical fire. We're, remember last week I, I told you that church is not a building. Church is not a building. Take your index finger. We did this last week. Just a test. See if you remember. Now point. That's the church. We are the church. So the, are we on fire for God? Are we on fire for God? And we, we know that we accomplish that through the Holy Spirit. That is accomplished in us through the Holy Spirit. Today's message is fruit of the Spirit. Fruit of the Spirit. When I was uh, a little boy, my granny lived in Winters, Texas. And uh, anybody know where Winters, Texas is? Winters blizzards? Yeah. I was born in winters and spent many summers and, and different times going and spending some time with Granny. And, and uh, she had uh, this, this tree in her backyard. And I, I've, I've come to find out it was a, I'd never seen a tree like it. Uh, and I've come to find out it was a native, a Texas native black walnut tree. That's, that's some, some of the black, anybody ever seen a black walnut tree? Totally, absolutely worthless. But they had these, I can, man, when I ran across, this is not actually of, of Granny's, uh, the fruit off of her tree, but I just ran across this on the internet, and man, I saw those, and man, my mind flashed back to Granny's black walnut tree. I'd seen, the, they start off that green color when, they're first, when they first come out, and then they turn, they, they start turning black like that. And, and you, when you get those things off the tree and you start, you know, as a little boy, you know, you, all sorts of things, you know, you're cracking them between bricks and all kinds of stuff. And they're just, man, they're just worthless. I'll tell you, the, the value of Granny's black walnut tree was my brother and I had a BB gun. And we, and we uh, there's lots of stories I can tell you about the BB gun, but this particular one, it, uh, we would shoot the black walnuts out of the black walnut tree. And, and, man, I mean, that was like a, a, a shooting gallery deluxe, man. I mean, we could sit there all weekend long and just, just pop those little black walnuts out of the tree. But, you know, that tree had, had uh, the illusion of fruit, fruitfulness, but the fruit was worthless. It was worthless. Now, I want to, you know, many of us have seen uh, this part of the country, pecan trees. Show me those pecans. I believe those are a ch Choctaw pecans. Some of y'all that are pecan experts may know better than I, but, but I was kind of doing some reading on pecan trees, and we've got many pecan trees in this area, and some years we'll have good pecans, and sometimes we won't. But uh, the Choctaw tree is uh, one of the more popular ones because the, the nuts are, are, are big and fat, and, and, you, and there's a lot of meat inside the nut, and, the, and they call them paper shell. The, the shell, paper shell, because they're easier to crack, the real thin shell, and so very popular tree. Uh, but, but we see that year, I, is this year, this year's been a good year for pecans, hasn't it? Yes? It's been a good, yeah. And, and so you have those years, it's like, man, the, the, the pecan trees are just loaded, and, and, they, and they, they drop those pecans, and it's, it's every man for himself. I remember one time when I was, again, in winters, my brother and I, we were, we were, too old to go trick-or-treating. We were, you know, like 21 or something like that. But, 
and we went up to this lady's house. We didn't, we didn't dress up. We just wanted some candy. And, you know, we got our coats, and we kind of put them up there and kind of walked up to the house, you know, and knocked on the door. We just wanted us some candy. No, really and truly, we were probably, golly, probably 15 years old or something. And I remember this lady uh, dropped some pecans, still in the shell, dropped some pecans in our, in our basket, you know, our sack. And we left, my brother looked at me, and he goes, crud, lady, I could have picked those up out in your front yard. <laughs> yeah, he was not happy about those pecans at all. Okay, that's all my childhood stories this morning. God's word teaches us that there's two ways that we can live our, our lives. There's two ways we can live our lives. And so I want us to kind of dig a little deeper into this scripture this morning. The first is, we can live our lives surrendered to the flesh, the sinful nature that's in us. We come, we come out of the womb, this, this broken, sinful creature. We have the curse of, of sin upon us, and, and we are broken. And, um, uh, we, and also, I want to add in there, we have, we have an enemy, the devil, who... He, he, he wants to steer us towards surrendering to the flesh. He wants us to surrender to the flesh. L listen, uh, this, this, there's this opposition going on the, this, in Galatians that we just read. Verse 19, the acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. And, and, and he goes on to say, those who live like this, if, that's, if you surrender yourself to that, now we're not talking about being perfect people. We're talking about someone who surrenders themselves to the things of the flesh. I, these are not my words. These are God's words. This, this is God's word. Will not inherit the kingdom of God. If, 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 our, if our lives that we're surrendered to the flesh and we're, we're seeking out the gratification of the sinful nature in us, we will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's God's word, church. Are we hearing that? And, in, and Paul, again, speaking to the church in Corinth, he says it this way, 1 Corinthians 6. Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor male prostitutes, nor homosexual offenders, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will enter the kingdom of God. That, and listen to this. That is what some of you were, past tense, he's speaking to the church, but you were washed you were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've been, it seems like that's been coming up a lot in the last few weeks of my sermons, and I haven't really necessarily intended that, but in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember me talking about there's power in the name of Jesus Christ? So we are washed. We are sanctified. We are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the power of the Spirit of God. So the name of Jesus and the Spirit of God is what washes us clean from this, this uh, surrendering of the flesh. Church, um, you know, I was just thinking this week that, you know, when I was a young man, you used to, you used to almost have to kind of work hard to get in trouble. You know? I mean, if you wanted to be addicted to pornography, you, you had to kind of work hard at that. You know, you had to sneak around and sleaze around and go in to try to find these places that sell certain types of magazines and stuff. Or uh, I, I can remember, this will be news to my mom, I can remember one of my friends in junior high introducing me to pornography. I mean, I, I'd, never, I'd never seen anything like that. I was in seventh grade, and he had his brother's magazine under a, under a mattress, and he introduced me to pornography. You know, you used to have to kind of slink around and, and, and try, to, try to find those things in your life. Now it comes after you. We carry it around in our pocket, for goodness sake. And our youth, our youth are under siege. Just talk to Jared and Tim. Just talk to Jared and Tim and see what's happening with our youth. I mean, it's like the enemy is coming after us. Used to, we had to go looking for him. Yeah, maybe he, was, he was still had, was plotting against us, but it used to be harder, but now sin's coming at us. 
He's coming at your kids and your grandkids. We, we can choose to surrender to that. Or there's an alternative. There's an alternative. The second thing, second way we can live our lives. We can live surrendered to the Spirit. And, you know, I, as I think about this contrast, he, uh, he says in verse 17, the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit. There's, there's, this, there's this battle going on for the hearts and minds of us in, our, in, in God's people. There's this battle going on. There's, the sinful nature is in conflict with the Spirit. Now, too many times, too many times, even Christians, we, we, we think that we can just dabble over here a little bit. Let's just, I just, just look a little bit. Just do a little bit. That won't hurt anybody, just a little. But it's like it's being, it's seducing us to be surrendered to the flesh, the sinful nature in us. But God says, that, no, surrender to the Spirit. Surrender to the Spirit. We are washed, we are sanctified, we're justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. And because we, have, we are surrendered to the Spirit, we now have the fruit of the Spirit in us. You can, I believe, you know, as I look back at Granny's wal black walnut tree, you know, she didn't have lush, plump, you know, hardy pecans dropping out of that tree. She had worthless black walnuts. Gave the illusion of, of, of something, uh, something beneficial. But when you got it down and you studied it, you saw it was just, just a mess. It's just a mess. There was no value in those walnuts. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We, as believers in Jesus Christ, when we are filled with the Spirit of God, we should exude those things. The Spirit of God should be oozing out of us. It doesn't mean that we, that we walk around in perfection, but we should be walking around with the Spirit of God oozing out of us. People when, you know, should be seeing these kinds of, this kind of fruit in us. Love. Now, I want to, I'm not going to take each one of these, but I want to just hit a few of them. Love. We, our culture, man, are we confused with that word. We, we think love is, uh, you know, is, you know if, you, if love is however we want to define it and love feels good and love, love is, you know, letting everybody kind of do their own thing and, you know, if you want to, uh, you guys read the papers, you guys read the paper. Sometimes love, you know, I've told you this before. Sometimes, in fact, the, the, the ultimate act of love was a man hanging like this. With nails driven through his hands and his feet. That was the most loving act of all humanity right there. It didn't feel good. It was not something that, that he relished. But, he, but it, said, it says in Hebrews chapter 12, it says, but for the joy set before him, Jesus endured the cross. What was the joy? It was just this painful mess. People rejected him, his best friends rejected him, deserted him, denied him. What was joyful about that? You and I. Our salvation, our being washed, being sanctified, being justified. That was the joy set before him that you and I were made right before a holy God. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Love, our, don't listen to how our, our world defines love. Listen to how God defines love. For God so loved the world that he gave. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, an action. There's, there's, uh, love has action to it. Love is not this warm feeling. Feelings betray us all the time. Now, I'll tell you this as a kind of side note. Husbands and wives, love your spouse. Love your spouse. Too many times we're thinking about them not doing a good job loving us. Love your spouse with action, with action. Love the way God loves, sacrificially, and joy. You know... Um, 
And you've heard me use this term before, but man, sometimes we're just, we're just around joy suckers. And, and, and the challenge to us is, you know, are we the joy sucker? If, if you're looking around the room, it's like, no, no, I don't see any joy suckers here. Maybe it's you. <laughs> I'm just saying. If we don't see any, it probably is us. You know, that where you just walk into a room and it's like, man, everybody's, hey, we're having fun. And like Jeff walks in there and like, Is that us? Are we, are we the ones? Or do we exude joy? And the really, the really uh, awesome thing about being a Christian is uh, being our best when things or circumstances are at their worst. I've told this story before, but I, I remember when my brother was, was, uh, was killed. And we're in Lubbock at the, at the hospital. And, and, I mean, really and truly, I just felt like, you know, we were just blindsided and we were just a mess. But... We were, but the peace of God was, was on us, even in the midst of those circumstances. And I remember a nurse saying, man, thank you for your family's blessed us. And I was just like, what, what are you talking about? And she used that, I'll never forget her statement. She said, I, I work in a, in a burn center and every day I see people coming in here in tragic cir circumstances. And I either see peace or panic. Those are the two things. It's, it's always one or the other, peace or panic. Panic is when we don't know how the story ends. We don't understand who Jesus is and what he's done for us. But when we understand that no matter what this world throws at us, we have a Savior that loves us. Peace that passes understanding. Joy in place of, of the trials of life. And on, you can see all of these different things that, that are fruit of the Spirit. So, so the, I guess the question... Um, the question is, do we have the Spirit? Now, that's the first thing we need. Do we have the Spirit of God in us? And, and I want to tell you, you could have gone to church every Sunday of your whole life and not have the Spirit of God in you. And I, I've said this before, but, but sit, standing in a garage doesn't make you a car. Not that I know for some of you slower ones, I'll explain that. Michael, I'll explain it to you later. Going to church and being good doesn't give us the Spirit of God. I, I hope you come to church because it nourishes God in us. It feeds our soul, at least it should. But it doesn't give us the Spirit of God. Jesus said it very clearly in, in, this, in this idea of this conflict between the sinful nature and the spiritual uh, feeling. Jesus said, flesh gives birth to flesh, but spirit gives birth to spirit. Now, he's, if you'll look at that passage closer, when he says spirit gives birth to spirit, he's, spirit is big S, big S. The spirit of God gives birth to our spirit. So there's something uh, that happens supernatural in us when the Spirit of God fills us. And so there's this constant conflict. Now, uh, so first question is, do we have the Spirit? And if, and if we're not sure, I, I can remember when I, I, I went, I was one of those kids, mom and dad, they had us in church every Sunday. I mean, it was just, it was never a question. We just, we, we knew Sunday morning, you get up, you get ready, we go to church. I mean, it was just I was just that kind of a household. And, but it wasn't until I was 30 years old that I really got it. I, I had missed it. It wasn't anybody's fault. It's just I would missed it. I thought being a Christian was serving and being a good person and, and pleasing God and so on and so on. No, it's not about me being good. It's about God who is good. And, and I remember when I was 30 and, and that... Revelation came because I basically because I was failing at that good that good part. I was a lousy husband. I was a, I was a hypocrite. And uh, it when that when when God it was it was it was this simultaneous thing was going on with me. The first thing that God showed me was um, I, I felt shame, and he he basically confirmed it. You're a wretched man. 
Yeah, you're a wretched man. But at that exact same moment when he was conveying that to me, he also said, but I love you. And I died for you. And I have washed you white as snow. And I will tell you that, and, and, and it was at that moment I feel like I was filled with the Spirit of God because I saw myself differently. I saw my wife differently. I saw life differently. The Spirit of God changes us. Flesh, and I'd, I, I lived it. Flesh gives birth to flesh. You want to live over here? Okay, try that out on for size. Let's see how that works out for you. And I talk to people all the time who's been living in this, this kingdom and, and, and things are messed up and they're, and they're broken. And it is, Flesh gives birth to flesh. It gives birth to brokenness. The enemy knows that, and that's his goal. But spirit, when the spirit, big S, when the spirit of God comes in us and fills us up, then suddenly supernatural things begin to happen in us. He begins to heal the brokenness of this. He begins to heal that. He begins to change us. He begins to set, us, set our, our feet on a new path, a new direction. So how do we receive this spirit if we don't have the spirit of God in us? How do we receive? Uh, just simple, you know, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, you can usually just go, just go read the quotes of Jesus and you can figure a lot of stuff out, church. Did you not know that? Anybody got a red letter Bible? Just start with, we'll start with Matthew and just start reading the red part. See if he doesn't r rock your world, the things he says. Well, here's one of the things he says. If you then, he's speaking to his disciples, if you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children. I won't stop there for a second. Yesterday, Cheryl and I went garage selling, you know, and, and we, you know, I looked around and all these infant tables, you know, it's like all these little grandmas going around, <laughs> circling around and, you know, checking. Anybody ever, ever seen that? Anyway, I digress. But we, we do the best we can. We give the best gifts that we can give. But he's saying, if, if you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Ask. You want to know how to receive the Holy Spirit? Ask. Ask the Lord. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I need you. In, in just a moment, as we conclude our, ser our sermon today and the, uh, the service, uh, I'm going to baptize Eve. And one of the things that I'm, I'm going to say over Eve, pray over Eve, is a filling of the Holy Spirit. Because uh, God's Word tells us that we repent of our sin, we receive Him as our Lord and Savior, and we confess Him as Lord and Savior. And, and, and we will be filled. The Holy Spirit's not just going to be out there somewhere. He's going to be in here. And I'll tell you, uh, I don't know about you, I need the Holy Spirit. I, I, I need Him. Every, I think I write a song, but every hour I need Thee. I think I'm going to write a song that says that. That just divinely came to me. Probably sell millions of copies of that. I just need Him. Do you need Him? I mean, is life wearing you out? Is it wearing you out? How about we take on some of this fruit of the Spirit, love? When, when, don't you just think about these words? Don't you just want this oozing out of you? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Don't we, don't we want that in our lives? Don't we want others to see that in us? By the way, when we live like that, it gives, gives glory to God. Our lives filled with the Spirit, when we are exuding the fruit of the Spirit, we bring glory to God. Bow, if you would, just bow your heads with me. I know many in this room have received the Holy Spirit long ago. We, we, in all honesty, we're, we're kind of afraid of that word because too many times man... We can make a, a mockery of, of the things of God. 
and we think that if we have the Holy Spirit, you know, we may roll around in the aisle and embarrass ourselves. That's not what we're talking about here at all. We're talking about power, power to glorify God, power to resist sin, power to live our lives in a way that's pleasing to God. So if you want that Holy Spirit, and you're not quite sure if you've ever received him. I want you to just kind of pray this prayer in your own heart with me. Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, I need you. I need your Holy Spirit. I confess that I'm a sinner and I'm in need of your mercy. Forgive me, Lord, from all unrighteousness, all that's unrighteous that's in me. I claim Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Wash me white as snow and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Make me a new creation. May the fruit of your spirit leak out of us. In the strong and powerful name of Jesus, amen. Hi, this is Pastor Jeff Hatcher with Wiley United Methodist Church in Abilene, Texas. I want to thank you for listening to this, uh, this message from God's Word today. I want to remind you that you have a Savior, His name is Jesus Christ, and He came to set you free. He came to heal the brokenhearted. He did that by hanging on a cross in our place. If you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to, I want to invite you to do that today. If you want to do that, just pray this prayer with me. Father, uh, I repent of my sins. I confess to you that I am a sinner. I ask Jesus Christ to come into my heart, to free me from my sin, to, to be my Savior and my Lord. Uh, help me to be the creation that you have, have created me to be. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer today for the first time, I want to ask you to do four things. First of all, I want to ask you to, to share that decision with a member of the clergy. Let them know that you've made that decision. Secondly, I want, you, want to ask you to be baptized. God's Word says that uh, believers in Jesus Christ, we affirm that and we celebrate that through baptism. And thirdly, I want to ask you to begin to read God's Word, to get into His Word, not just because uh, we think that that makes us good, but because this is the Word of life. And finally, to, to find a Bible-believing and preaching church to be a part of. If you've made that decision, I also welcome uh, a conversation with you. You can reach me at jhatcher at wileymethodist.org, and I'd be happy to come along your side in that journey. God bless you.